Hi there. In this video, we're going to be looking at a little bit of theory. We'll uh, take a look at uh, resistors and how to read the, the band coding to uh, determine their value, as well as investigating a little bit voltage, current, and resistance. So the first item I thought I should deal with is, you know, we've got these uh, groups of resistors that are, the notation is here on the bottom, but once you free them out of their initial packaging, they're here loose, and you need to be able to figure out what values they are because they're no longer connected to the original packaging. And there's a way to do it, and we have to look at the bands here. So this particular one has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five bands. And here's, here's another one. It looks like it's the same. It's different. Okay, so these bands are indicative of the value of the resistor. And the way you determine the value is you have to first orient the bands in the proper way. Now, these are a little bit ambiguous, but this one is less so. You can see that the first four bands are kind of over onto one side and there's a gap here and then uh, fifth band is on the other end. Now this is the way you're supposed to read the bands um, with the, uh, the lonely band on the right. And the way it works is something like this. So for a five band code, which these are, they have a blue background and they have five bands. The first band is a value according to a color. In, in this case, it's red, so red is a two, and then orange is a 3. So this orange one, 3, purple, 7, and then black is the multiplier. The multiplier would be in this case 1. So this one would be 2, 3, 7 times 1, 237 ohms. So this one this one looks like it's let's see. Oops. Brown black black, red. Is that right? Brown, black, black, red. All right, so let's see how if we can count this up. Brown, black, black, red. One, zero, zero, times 100. So 1, 0, 0 times 100 would be 10,000. Okay, let's check it out. Use my own meter here. So 
So that's 9.85k. So that's almost 10,000 ohms. 9,880 ohms. So we've correctly, correctly determined this particular one. Now, these blue ones are sometimes ambiguous, as we saw um, earlier. Sometimes hard to know in what direction to read them. But if you look at the lookup table here, you'll see that the tolerance here, this brown band, is the tolerance, and that means that the value that's indicated by the first four bands is plus or minus 1%. So it's correct to plus or minus 1%. So these are supposedly high-quality resistors. Now, uh, these are from China, so um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider them to be... Uh, accurate. So that that 1% is not is not uh, is not accurate. This one that we just figured out, the brown, black, black, red, we determined was 9.8k and that's not within 1% of 10k. I don't think. At any rate, uh, if you look at the at the band, if you can see either uh, a red or a brown band, that should be on the right hand side. So these are, I, I think, all tolerance of 1% purportedly. So the brown band should go on the, on the right and then you read the first four uh, colors. There's another way of, or a different kind of uh, resistor, actually it's basically the same kind, but it has a simpler um, way to uh, calculate. And this uses four bands, one, two, three, and then this band is the tolerance. And the tolerance, the gold band means that it's a 5% tolerance. This is a 10k resistor using the three band or four band system. So if we go and look at We look at the, uh, the four band system. If it's uh, brown, black, orange, this is the multiplier here. So it's brown, black, orange, one, zero, K. One, zero, K is 10 K. If you, um, if you don't trust yourself to remember what, uh, how to read these uh, resistor bands, you can always get something like this. Um, you can get these at a hardware store, and you can get them for around $20, $25. There's one very nice one that um, you can get at Canadian Tire, which actually has... Um, an analog meter, which uh, is, I think, $22. Then you can use it around the house, not just for electronics. So let's now take a look at a little bit of theory. We have, in all electronics, four main parameters. In every electronic circuit, there's voltage, 
<clears throat> there's current and there's resistance. So if we draw out a battery, <clears throat> make a switch, an LED, and a resistor. This ground symbol isn't required at all times, but it's usually something that is customary to include just to give um, some added, um, added indication. If you have a very complicated circuit schematic, having these uh, indicate zero volts is a good thing to have. And you can put them anywhere in your schematic that you want. Just to emphasize that li this line here that goes back to the negative of the battery is ground. Let's say this is plus 5 volts here. We don't necessarily know or care what values this LED takes. And let's just say we have a 220 ohm resistor here. The voltage is determined by either uh, a battery or, in this case, uh, the USB connection, or it could be a photovoltaic cell, or it could be just a, a power supply of some sort. This is determined in volts. So everybody knows plus 5 volts is fairly familiar. Some devices use 3.3 volts. The house current uses about 120 volts. The difference between, other than the voltage, the difference between house voltage and voltage that you get from the battery, the voltage that you get from a battery is direct current. In other words, you connect this up, close the switch, and the electrons move from the negative to the positive terminal like this. Direct always in one direction. For house wiring, uh, this is called alternating current. The voltage that you see, if we say 120 volts, it goes like this in a sine wave. So what's this thing called current? Well, if you think of voltage as being the pressure of the electrons, voltage is the push that the electrons are given when the battery switch, when the switch is closed. So a higher voltage means more of a push. So if we have a, a low voltage, let's say we've got our battery here, just a regular 1.5 volt battery, and we connect, we get two wires, and we get them really close. We get them super, super close. We might see a tiny little spark. We get them really, really close, microscopically close. 
On the other hand, if we have a 9 volt battery, we've got these two terminals here, we get the wires quite close, but a little bit farther from this, you'll see a spark. And the spark will be noticeable, uh, much more so than a 1.5 volt. Now, if you've ever seen a short circuit in house wiring, so we've uh, plugged our, our uh, cord into the wall, and let's say we've got two wires sticking out like this. They don't have to get very close before you see the electricity jumping, making a spark. And this gap could be, you know, two millimeters or three millimeters, depending on the voltage. The higher the voltage, the more apt the spark is to happen farther away. So if this is 120 volts AC, and then I have 1,000 volts, that gap is, can be much wider, maybe 5 millimeters, and so on, until you get to lightning, when you've got maybe one million volts, and that spark travels a long way, hundreds of feet. And that's just because the pressure on the electrons is greater or lesser to jump across, say, an air gap. So voltage is pressure. So what's current? Current is the amount of electrons, basically. So the more electrons that you have to move through here, the more work can be done. Now, because electricity is a combination of these two things, you can have things like high voltage but low current. Or you can have high current and low voltage. Both of these can kill you if you have the right values, or the wrong values in this case. In the case of the 5 volts that comes from the USB Arduino, 5 volts is not enough to hurt you if you, of course, if you touch the, the um, electrodes. In general, up to 30 volts is perfectly safe, no matter what current you're dealing with. Once you get above 30 volts, then things get to be, you need to be cautious. We don't use anything ever in this course, anything near 30 volts. Everything is pretty much 5 volts, or you can power your device with uh, a 9 volt battery, but it gets regulated down to 5 volts. So you don't have anything to worry about there. So the next thing I wanted to mention is there's this magical formula. You don't have to know it in this course, but if you're curious, you can look into it. It's called Ohm's Law. And Ohm's Law combines voltage and current and resistance 
together into this symbiotic relationship. Ohm's law looks like this. V stands for voltage, I stands for current, so current current is specified as I and that is amperes or amps V volts and resistance is ohms So the way this works is that you can have, you can uh, solve for I, you can solve for V, and you can solve for R. So for current, that equals voltage over resistance. Voltage equals current times resistance. and resistance equals voltage over current. Okay, so let's do some uh, experimental physics here. We'll create a circuit that has five volts and uh, normally we would put a switch here, but I'll just keep it open for reasons I'll explain in a minute. We've got uh, an LED and a resistor. Going back to the minus of the battery. This is actually will be our Arduino. Now, uh, this area here, this is called the load, and of course any, any circuit that doesn't have a load is actually a short circuit. So our, our, our circuit needs to have some sort of load to make it do some sort of work. In our experiment we're going to measure our resistor. We're also going to measure our voltage, and we'll first measure the voltage under load, uh, uh, without a load, and then with a load, because sometimes the voltage uh, changes. So let's uh, set it up. Here's our voltage source. Grab our 5 volts, ground, Place them on the plus and ground buses. I'll put this one down here. And uh, so we've got a resistor. Let's measure the resistor with our multi-tester here. So that's 224 ohms. So place that on the breadboard. What was that again? 224? Yeah. All right, so we'll write that down. Two twenty four ohms. 
And we will measure now our voltage with no load. That's 4.95 volts. 4.95. And we'll put in our LED. And connect it up so that our voltage is under load. And that goes down to about 4 point, let's say 4.8. Jumps around. 4.8, oh, that's 4.88 volts under load. Okay. Now the reason I left the switch out is because when we measure voltage, we measure it across the plus and minus terminals of the battery or the power source. But when we want to measure current, we're actually measuring the number of electrons that are going past a certain point. So we have to put our meter into the circuit. So here's our a little picture of our meter here and we put the plus or the red uh, red wire on the part that's closest to the plus of the battery and our black wire will go here and that will complete the circuit. In order to do that I have to switch my cables around so that I'm able to test for amperage. Actually, we'll test for milliamps. So, put our black wire here and the plus wire here. And I'm getting a reading of about, let's go moving around a lot. Let's say 11.7 milliamps. Eleven point seven milliamps. Right. So let's now check it, do a calculation using our Ohm's law, and see if that is correct. So our Ohm's law, our uh, triangle. B I R. So what do we know? We know voltage and we know resistance. So I equals V over R. So our voltage is 4.88, that's our voltage under load, divided by 224 equals, now this is current in amps, right? 
So I equals point zero two two amps, which would equal twenty two milliamps. Now, so we measured on the meter 11.7 .7, and Ohm's law is telling me that it should be 22. So I'm guessing that my meter is a little bit out. Probably the meter, this is not an expensive meter, it's quite an inexpensive meter. Uh, it could be that um, the meter is more accurate at higher uh, current levels, but in any case, this has given us an idea of uh, how many milliamps I'm, I'm drawing to light this LED with this particular resistor. This gets to be important. Your current draw is important because your output pins of the Arduino can only deliver a certain current level. And that uh, value is actually 40 milliamps. 40 milliamps is your maximum current draw from Arduino input output pins. That's it. So going by this, I can run one LED up to 40 MA, or I can run anything up to draw up to 40 MA from each input output pin without harming the uh, Arduino controller. Anything above that, you're taking your chances. So uh, we'll come back to this probably in another video when we get to draw um, driving things like motors or servos or uh, other devices that require more current. So that's a little bit about resistors, about current, about voltage, and Ohm's law. See you next time.